Business in ports and shipping industry has picked up. Ports where the ships dock do not just move goods, but also move the economy. In a short period of 100 days, under the dynamic leadership of Sri Narendra Modi, the government has unveiled an action plan for the maritime sector, which is being implemented with vigor. It's almost after one decade that Indian ship owners are seeing some very positive steps being taken by the government of India. Three things which come to my mind straight away are, one is a general trading license, which instead of earlier, which was for one year, is a lifetime license. Secondly, the registration of ships has become much easier. And lastly, the India control tonnage, wherein an Indian owner can buy a ship registered in India, but flag it outside, so he has access to a better and cheaper finance. These proactive measures and policies have started showing results. There has been a significant growth in cargo in major ports in the first four months of the current financial year. As compared to 2013, growth in container traffic has jumped from minus 4.73% to plus 5.33%. The turnaround time has reduced from 2.5 days to 2.16 days, a fall of almost 13.6%. Pre-birthing detention has gone down drastically from 11.64 hours to 4.08 hours, registering a decline of 64.86%. The Shipping Corporation of India, a Navratna company, has made a profit of around 50 crore rupees in the first quarter and is exploring new areas of growth like LNG transportation, Coastal shipping and inland waterways, after facing years of neglect, have been accorded the highest priority, leading to an increase of approximately 5% in cargo movement through national waterways. For the first time, food grains have been moved from Kakinara to Agartala through the Indo-Bangladesh River Protocol routes. To promote green and clean modes of transport, coastal vessels will be given priority berthing, green channel system of clearance and incentives. A new transloading zone has also been notified to facilitate movement of coal along the river Ganga. Mother Ganga has been a source of physical and spiritual sustenance of the Indian civilization over millennia. A historic beginning has been made with the announcement of the Jalvikas Mag project, which will enable bulk transportation of goods and passengers on the waterways. Taking advantage of the impetus given by the government, a private operator has launched a cruise on the river Ganga from Patna to Varanasi, the two Buddhist destinations. This launch unpacks the vision that will revive our long-forgotten river-based society and economy. It's been fabulous uh, and it's just been absolutely wonderful. It's been everything that we hoped it would be. A ferry service between India and Myanmar will also commence in October 2014. The Ministry of Shipping has put into operation the Prime Minister's vision of Make in India by asking Gail to get three LNG vessels built in India as part of their tender condition for transporting LNG. In a bid to unleash the potential of major ports, the Prime Minister launched the 4,000 crore rupee SEZ in JNPT, which will create 1.5 lakh jobs. He also laid the foundation stone for the road connectivity project of JNPT at a cost of 2,787 crore rupees. To reduce congestion, plans are being drawn up to set up dry ports at inland centers in the hinterland of the ports. A seaplane service has also been started in Mumbai to ferry passengers. India has 1.3 lakh seafarers, comprising about 7% of the global seafarer community. Efforts are now on to increase it to 10% in the next five years. A step in this direction 
is the online examination and counseling process started by the Indian Maritime University from June 2014. I counseling Ship breaking is the latest addition to the mandate of the ministry. Japanese assistance has been sought for modernizing the ship breaking infrastructure at Alang in Gujarat and Darukana in Mumbai. Under the guidance of the Honorable Minister of Shipping, Sri Nitin Gadkari, the ministry has taken many measures to create a facilitative ecosystem for growth of the maritime sector. For ship owners, the recent India control tonnage policy change, I believe still needs a little bit of tweaking. But in principle, it will give us access to easy, easier access to more economical finance. All great civilizations and nations have developed on the back of their maritime prowess and sway over the seas. It is the vision of this government to restore the glorious past of Bharat and re-establish its pride of place in the comedy of maritime nations. The Sagar Mala, a garland of ports along the coastline, will certainly power the engine of growth for India. The initiatives taken in the last 100 days are just the beginning, but surely the mist has started to lift and there is now wind in the sails.